Hi and welcome to the video and welcome to Farsis if you're just joining us. So this video is just supposed to be a quick introduction to our control panel as you'll be spending probably quite a lot of time in there. So I'm going to cover the following topics. I'll cover how to log in, how to see your invoices, how to see your future upcoming invoices, how to update your payment details, how to update your contact details, where to manage your domains, how to find your products and how to get support. So our first topic is how to log in. There are two ways you can log into your control panel. You can either go through our website, fastsafe.co.uk, or you can browse directly to the page. If you want to go through fastsafe.co.uk, just browse to the main fastsafe.co.uk website, go to login, and then you're going to have a few options here, but we want control panel here. So log in there. And the screen will come up here. So the username is usually the username you signed up with. Uh, so I've got my details saved and the password is just the password you set on uh, sign up. So click log in there. And the other one, if you just want to get to this screen directly, the URL is admin.fastos.co.uk too. So now we've, uh, we've logged in. Let's take a look at the next topic. Okay, in this section, I'm just gonna show you how to find your invoices and see what you've got coming up for renewal. So if you hover over your user and go to invoices and renewals, you're gonna be taken to the invoice section. So we've got three tabs here. We've got invoices, which is ones we've already paid, product renewals, which is gonna show you your upcoming invoices, and you've got transaction history, which is basically the same as invoices, but it removes anything uh, where you haven't actually paid anything. So you can see here in the invoices, I've got an invoice for nothing that won't show in transaction history. So that's the sections here at the top. We've got the date range. So at the moment, I'm only seeing invoices between these dates. So if you want to go back and just choose whatever date you want and click apply date range, um, and that will just give you all the invoices within that period. And also we've got here, we can see lots of paid results. So you can also change it so you get 50 results per page. Okay, so invoices that are gonna be coming up. So product renewals. So date range is exactly the same. Um, you can change, um, obviously not a, a, an invoice, in, a, a date in the past, but you can change the uh, change it forward as far as you want and it will show you there. A couple of things worth noting in here is that domain renewals will not show in this product renewal section. And also if you pay for a month, if you've got a monthly recurring bill, you'll only ever see the next instance of that monthly recurring invoice. Okay, so that's it for this section. Uh, next up, I'll show you how to update your payment details. Okay, let's show you where you can update your payment details. So if you hover over your user and go to payment options, you'll come over to the, uh, the payment options screen. Now there's a few options here and most people won't use any other than the credit card or the PayPal. So if you need to update your PayPal paying, billing agreement or your uh, update a credit card or add a new one, this is where you do it. If you're particularly interested, um, domain credits and account balance, most people won't ever really use these, um, but domain credits would be, uh, you can buy a big batch of domain credits um, and every time you renew a domain for the you would use a domain credit and it's generally cheaper to use domain credits than it is to renew the domain name every year so it's good if you buy a lot of domain names basically uh, account balance uh, fairly self-explanatory you can add money to your fastest account and we would use that before we use the credit card or a paypal agreement but that's really it for this section uh, nothing too surprising there so let's move on to the next section Okay, so let's take a look at how to update your contact details. So if you hover over your user and go to account details, it's going to take you into this section here. Now, there's a couple of bits that are worth noting here. Um, so we've got my user here. So that's the user I'm logged in as at the moment. And that's this one here, Will Spencer, will at fastosewebinars.com. Um, and that's also my account username. So that's just for my logged in user. 
Now, if you want to update your account details, that is different to your user details. So you can edit your user details if that's all you need to. So if you want to update your password or anything, but if you want to change the account details, so that's going to be the address and the email address that's going to receive any correspondence. As you can see, that's different to my user there. Um, you would do it under this account details section and we can edit all the contact details uh, by clicking through uh, on here and you'll see that you can uh, edit up all the details here one thing that can potentially catch people out a little bit here um, is domain associations and um, so what that is is where i've registered domains in this account these contact details are the contact details that are being used on those on those domains so if i update this the details here it's going to affect the associated domain name so just something to be uh, wary of and uh, potentially if you didn't if you if you've got sort of lots of users and you didn't want those uh, domain domain names being changed the contact details but apart from that like i say it won't affect many people uh, but it's just worth noting so with that in mind uh, let's move on to the next topic which actually is where you can manage your domains Now let's look at your domain registrations. Now worth noting at this point that a domain registration is separate from web hosting or email hosting or any of the other products you might have purchased from us. Domain name registration is you saying, I want to have this domain for a certain amount of period of time and that domain is yours for that period of time. You don't have to have a website or anything with it, but you just register the domain name. And that is something that is catches many people out. So I think it's just worth noting. So if you go to this domain name section here under hosting and domains, uh, we can see all the domain names I've got in my account here. So this fhtesting.co.uk, if we click on that, we can see all the details for this domain name registration. So DNS records, name servers, uh, registration details for the domain name. If we go back to that overview quickly, there's just one thing I wanted to talk about before I finish this section, and that is all renewing domain names. So here you've got the expiry date of that domain name. Now, this section here, you can see if I hover over that icon, auto renew for that domain name is disabled. That means if it gets to that date and I don't do anything with that domain, I don't renew it, it will just expire and go back into the pool of domains for people to buy. This domain underneath it has got auto renewal enabled. So when it gets to 30 days before this expiry date, Fasthost will automatically use the payment details on my account to renew that domain for the, uh, the next period. Now that period will depend on your initial registration. If you initially registered it for two years, we would renew it for two years. If you renewed it, if you registered it for three years, we would renew it for three years and so on. You can change that if you go into the domain itself. If you want to disable the renewal, uh, all you've got to do is check the box, drop down, and you can enable or disable. Now, re domain renewals don't show in your upcoming invoices, but we will email you 60 days before the expiry date to advise you that in the next 30 days we'll be taking payment for that renewal. And that 30 days um, before that expiry date is just to make sure that there's no um, there's no interruption to your services and you don't accidentally lose domains that you wanted to keep just in case you're on holiday or anything like that. OK, let's move on to the next section, which is how to find your services. So it could be web hosting, WordPress hosting, etc. OK, so how to manage the products you've purchased with this. Now, this might be changing an email password, changing an FTP password, anything like that. That was going to be found using this navigation menu on the left hand side. Uh, it's all pretty self-explanatory, so I won't go into too much depth. Um, but generally, web hosting is going to cover most things. Uh, it's quite a good place to start. So if you've got a website builder with us or an e-commerce package, uh, you could find it in web hosting. It will list most stuff in there. Uh, if I just click on that, uh, I've got quite a lot in this account, but I will see a list of them here. Again, we can change the number per page, um, but if you can't see what you've got, um, you can't see what you're looking for and you've got a lot of results, it could just be uh, hidden in another page. And you can also do a quick search. WordPress hosting is slightly different. So if you go into WordPress hosting, um, you're going to see, I think I've just got one package in here, so I won't get a list. But if you've got more than one, you'd see a list here. And this is, like I say, where you're going to manage that actual web hosting. So if we quickly just show you a very a package. So uh, if we just go into um, a domain.co.uk here, 
you click on that and then you can go into the package overview and manage it so i could i've got my um i've got my web server ip i can change things like web scripting logging i can manage my ftp users so i can get my ftp details from there all of that sort of stuff is going to be found here um and also if you've got email for that package you can just use the tab at the top there um, everything else is fairly self-explanatory so i'm not going to go through all of that we have got articles on everything you might need to do within your fastest account uh, so anything that you're actually specifically trying to do um, go to our help site and you can search for that which leads me nicely on to our final topic which is how to actually get some support if you need some help So how to get support? Well, there's a couple of options. Um, you can give us a call um, or you can use our um, support site to raise a ticket or do some live chats. And I'll quickly just run through some of that now. Now, if you're logged into your control panel, if you click on get support at the top here, uh, you'll see some information. So our, telefo our telephone support number will be displayed there and also your support code. So they'll use that when you phone up, they'll ask you for your support code and that's where you would find that. Uh, you can also use our support site. So if I click on that link there, it will take me through, our to, through to our support site and I will be logged in as this user. Um, so as we can see, I'm logged in as Will Spencer. You can browse to this site and use it not logged in by just browsing to help.fastos.co.uk, but you won't obviously be able to access things like your support tickets or you won't be able to start a live chat. But if you ever do want to use that, you can browse to help.fastos.co.uk and use the login button at the top there where it says log out now, it would say login. Um, so first things first, support guides. So we've got a massive extensive library of support guides. It covers everything from how to set up a new FTP user to how to do some configuration on your dedicated server. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of information in here. Generally speaking, the most popular guides are gonna be on the front here, but you can just do a search for. So uh, if I just wanted to change my FTP password, I could do a search for that and it would bring up the results from that so look, one of the first results there so that's how to use the the support guides um and if you want to check raise a ticket you go to my support and this is like an email ticket so you raise a ticket with us and we will reply um for you here so here we can see a list of my previous support tickets and if i want to create a new one i would just click on it click on that create a new ticket and I would be able to raise a ticket with support um, and you'll get email updates whenever we respond to those um, but you can always manage them to check for updates in that same section if you want to use live chat you can do that here uh, the live chat have got limited hours it's not 24 7 like phone support but all the information um, is here uh, about the um, about the, the opening times and next we can just click on chat with a member of our team i'm not going to do that because i don't want to uh, i don't actually want to start a new live chat with one of our team but basically yeah just do it there and you'll do a live chat with one of our support team and that's really all there is to it hopefully that's been useful and uh, like i say we are here 24 7 uh, for any support so you're not alone and if you do get stuck just just give us a call uh, or give us a live chat or drop us a ticket we're always happy to help thanks very much for watching Goodbye for now.